Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. Today in this video, we are going to see the lab activity related to the heat of neutralization. And for this purpose, we are using hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide for this experiment. This experiment can also be mentioned by the aim to determine the heat of neutralization of HCl with NaOH. So in either way, it will be given in your textbooks. So before performing the lab activity, I am just going to show you the what is called heat of neutralization. So this heat of neutralization, to understand this, I am just going to mention a chemical reaction. So in this chemical reaction, this NaOH on reaction with HCl, it produces NaCl plus water. And in this process, this much amount of energy is released. Right. So now the question comes, how you come to know that energy is released? because we are going to perform the experiment and in this process energy is evolved from the reaction and that evolved uh, energy can be mentioned by this negative sign right by seeing this negative sign we can say the energy is released so the definition for the enthalpy of neutralization or heat of neutralization is when one gram equivalent of acid is neutralized by one gram equivalent of base, the energy released in the process is known as heat of neutralization. And the reaction is carried out in dilute aqueous solutions. This definition can also be defined by an alternative method and this is the alternative method. So what is that alternative method? Here I am just going to show you. So this heat of neutralization can also be mentioned as heat of formation of one mole of H2O by the combination of one mole of H plus ions with one mole of OH minus ions. Right? So why it is so? Because in this process Na plus and Cl minus remains unchanged. This can, all, this can be understand by understanding the process. These both NaOH and HCl completely ionized in the dilute solution because both are strong acid and base. And on reaction, they form NaCl which is a salt and that is again completely ionized. So no change occur for this Na plus and Cl minus. Only the change occurs this OH minus on reaction with H plus it produces H2O. That is why the heat of neutralization can also be um, mentioned as one formation of one mole of H2O on reaction with strong acid and strong base only and if we are not having the strong acid and strong base we are having weak acid with a strong base or vice versa then the amount of energy will be slightly less than this value and this value is constant because this is the energy of formation of one mole of h2o in case of strong acid and strong base so this is very very important now coming to the procedure and here is the procedure part so this in this procedure we are taking 50 ml of HCl and in another disposal glass we are having 50 ml of NaOH and after every 30 seconds we are measuring their temperature till the temperature remains constant right once the temperature they attain a constant temperature at that moment we are going to add our NaOH to 50 ml of HCl right so we add this and we again take the temperature readings after every 30 seconds. Now I'm just going to show you the lab activity. Let's start. The 0.1 normal NaOH solution, 50 ml of this NaOH I have taken in the measuring flask. I have transferred it into the disposal glass and uh, I just left it with the thermometer. Similarly, I am going to take 50 ml of 0.1 normal HCl and I transfer it into the into the disposal cup and now I kept my thermometers in both the solutions to take the readings till we are getting the stabilized reading right. So here is the thermometer reading, so 30.3 and 
here reading is changed for acid it is 30.2 and for base it is 30.5 so we are going to record these readings and this is 30.6 after some time we are having this 30.1 and 30.5 for acid and base respectively and afterward no further change is observed and now I am going to add acid to the base and you can see the reading immediately so 30.9 and then 31.1 then 31.2 is a constant reading which is not changed further and I have taken this this is now decreasing right 31.1 so we recorded these reading now we are going to perform now we are going to make the graph for these readings so this is 31.1 so before making the calculation we just understand the formula which we are going to use to calculate the heat of neutralization so here is the formula in this process the heat of neutralization is equal to the heat gained because the reaction is performed in the uh, disposal glass and that glass also absorbs some energy and heat gained by the mixture because on reaction with HCl with NaOH the temperature of the solution is raised so that is why we call it heat gained by the mixture fine so this formula can also be written in this form so what is that this heat gained by the calorimeter will be given by uh, heat capacity of calorimeter uh, multiplied by raising temperature similarly we can write down heat capacity of the mixture multiplied by raising temperature raising temperature means the T2 minus T1 so this equation can also be um, here I'm just going to show you the meaning of the terminology which we have used here so this is C is stands for the heat capacity and this CP this subscript P stands for the constant pressure and this C is related with the heat by this equation so Q is equal to C into T2 minus T1 or delta T so this equation can also be written as Q upon delta T right so if there is a small change in the heat of reaction then this heat according to the first law of thermodynamics can be mentioned as delta H because the reaction is performed at constant pressure this delta H is known as enthalpy of the reaction so here I have mentioned the heat and here I have mentioned this delta H and somewhere it is mentioned as enthalpy of the reaction so it all are having same meaning right so don't get confused with the terminology which we have used here and this heat capacity can also be determined by mass into specific heat so specific heat is what when one degree temperature is raised of one gram of the substance that is called heat specific heat and this is multiplied by mass of the substance then we get heat capacity of that particular substance right so this equation can also be mentioned as in this manner this CP we have measured in our previous experiment if you have not checked that experiment please go and check that first then you will better understand this experiment and here this CP mixture mixture is what this is com the combination of NaOH and HCl or acid plus base so that is why I have written this CP for uh, instead of the CP and raising temperature as mass of the base into specific heat according to this this equation so this CP can be written as for base M, M mass of base into specific heat into raising temperature plus mass of acid into specific heat into delta T temperature right so this equation can also be written in this manner and if you have not taken the mass of the substance as we have not taken the mass of the uh, acid or base then we can also convert this equation as V into D because mass is equal to volume into density 
so here we are using the uh, density of the acid and base as uh, density of the water so this equation can also be elaborated in this form to the terminology which we uh, know the parameters right so this equation can also be divided into three parts one is uh, heat absorbed by the calorimeter heat gained by the base and heat gained by the acid instead of mixture we separately written acid and base right so this is the formula which we are going to use for the calculation part and these are the readings which we have observed during this experiment and uh, on the basis of these readings we have drawn this graph and this graph this graph right and in this process the heat of um, uh, acid is going to this to this right as you can see here these are the readings for this so because in the process i can draw two dimensions only so i have not drawn this dimension right so in the textbooks you can see this now how we are going to draw this so here is the decrease in temperature of acid and here is the decrease in temperature of base while we are and once we are going to mix the um, acid and base we are getting this kind of readings right here you can see the readings so from here we have mixed and after this we can see the readings these are the readings which are shown in the curved graph right so in this manner we are going to draw this graph so this at this point where the temperature where we have mixed the solution i have drawn a vertical line and to this vertical line we can see what would be the temperature at the starting of mixing so that can be uh, measured by extrapolating this graph right so through this we are going to measure the temperature fine and uh, here are the meaning usual meaning of this tm this is the temperature of mixture tb temperature of base ta temperature of acid right so here i have just mentioned that this is the heat capacity of the calorimeter which we have uh, mentioned from the previous experiment right so we can we you can check it out there and uh, we are going to now measure the raise in temperature so t mixture minus t base base stands for noh so in the start uh, from here we get tm tm is this much here this is the tm minus tm of base base reach to 30.6 so the reading is 0 so the reading is 0.6 degree centigrade raise in temperature you can ask me here is the degree centigrade and here is the kelvin so what we need to do actually if we convert this 31.20 into kelvin so this is 273 plus 31.20 similarly we need to convert this into kelvins and this is plus 273 this is minus 273 so these two will be cancelled out so in this manner in both the cases we get 0.6 kelvin or degree centigrade so we will take it as 0.6 kelvins because our heat capacity is measured in kelvins right similarly we can measure the raise in temperature for the acid so here for the acid we are having 31.2 which is the temperature of the mixture here minus the initial temperature of the acid so in this manner we get this much of raise in temperature so here in this step we are having heat capacity here and tm minus tb tm minus tb and tm minus ta now the question come you can ask me why you have written here tm minus tb rather you are using tm minus heat uh, temperature raised by the uh, calorimeter or the uh, disposal cup actually in the starting i have taken my base noh in the calorimeter so individually i cannot measure this so uh, just to measure that i am going to write down the same amount of heat is absorbed by the calorimeter right so that is why i have written tm minus tb and here this is for base tm minus tb and this is for sa tm minus ta if you kept your acid in that calorimeter then you should write down tm minus ta so that is about the formula fine now we are just going to put the readings 
which we have observed so here is the heat capacity raise in temperature for tm minus tb and here is the 50 ml of the solution i have taken in the calorimeter and uh, density of water is here you can see density of water is 1 gram per cc i have mentioned all the readings here with their units so that you can easily understand the formula and here is the heat capacity so heat capacity for water is this much similarly we have written for the acids here you can see fine and uh, if you see this is the calorific value of the calorimeter so kelvin will be cancelled out by this kelvin only joule is left here cc cancelled out by this cc and this grams cancelled out by this grams and this kelvin cancelled out by this kelvin only joule is left so i am just going to show you this these are the values and on solving these we are just getting this much amount of heat is evolved in this process right but when 50 ml of 0.1 normal hcl is taken this heat evolved is for that one right but we need to calculate the heat evolved joule per mole so to calculate that he, joule per mole we need to divide it by the number of moles because and we need to calculate the number of moles so how we are going to calculate the number of moles i have taken 0.1 normal hcl 50 ml of hcl and i am just going to convert it mole per liter so how much moles will be there so n is equal to this much right so in this manner you can calculate if you have taken 0 0.1 into 100 ml so accordingly you can check it out right so whatever be the readings you have taken you can convert your number of moles by this we are going to divide this energy by the number of moles so here you can see because students are getting confused over here what from where this value comes from right because in the books textbooks it is directly mentioned over there i have seen lots of books so on dividing it we get this much amount of heat released per mole right so this is this is only in joules and this is joule per mole that is the difference over here so you clearly understand what i am going to say and this can be converted into kilojoules per mole so here is the value of kilojoules per mole but this value is too much as in the starting i have told you this is 57.1 kilojoule per mole right kilojoule per mole so this is very high value and for this much amount of um, number of moles so this is too high and uh, i have checked it out various times the reason for having this much this high amount of heat is because the temperature raised is not properly measured because we should require for this purpose we should require very sensitive thermometer which can read up to two, two digits so this value can be uh, less this value may be less than that if we measure the temperature very specifically there are some impurities in the solution due to which the heat of uh, neutralization is exceeds i hope you find this video helpful and uh, thank you all thanks for watching